Welcome back to the channel everyone and this is a video that's been needing updating for a while. The last time I did this video was beginning of May, maybe even late April of 2020. That being 10 cheap fragrances for life. If I could only keep 10 cheap fragrances, what 10 would they be? And there's a few changes to what it was last year because a lot of cheapies have come into my life and into my collection since and some I just can't imagine not having at this point and then some you may be expecting to see and some you may be surprised to still see but I want to talk to you about them here today so stay tuned Those of you that saw the original video, you may be wondering if anything from this house is still relevant to me as something I'd want to keep forever. And I'm talking about the House of English Laundry. And yes, one of the two has been bumped because there was two on there last time. The one I still feel I got to keep forever even though I don't wear all the time. I just really love this scent is English Laundry Windsor. I just dig it. Look, I know it's probably the most polarizing from English Laundry. And I know it. not everybody's a fan of it, but it's just, it's kind of classy, I find. It's extremely masculine and spicy. It's a lot of you know I love a good spicy fragrance. And this is a great spicy cheap fragrance. You can still find them, the loose bottles for around $13 at the rack stores. You can still find gift sets for around $20, bucks, 25 bucks, even $30. Bucks. It's well worth it. You know, I have several bottles of this uh, for good reason. My thoughts and feelings have not changed on it. It still performs very well for me. These are older bottles that I have. They're a few years old. And uh, I just love it. Like I said, I love a good spicy fragrance. This is a great matured, spicy, woody, tobacco, synthetic oud. It's got a lot of different things going for it. Cloves. If you don't like cloves, you'll hate this, obviously. Strong clove note here. But it adds to that dark spice that I just really dig about it. I always have. It's always performed about eight or so hours on my skin. I just really like it. It really suits my taste and my style, especially in the cooler months. This is definitely geared for the colder weather. I would say fall, winter, early spring. Definitely evening wear as well. Strong enough to cut through the cold. It's very warming due to all the spices and the darker nuances and notes that they have. I just dig it. It's not going to be for everybody. Like I said, it's probably the most polarizing fragrance that English Laundry sells, but it's it's still my favorite. I still love Cambridge Night. Don't get me wrong, but if I have to pick between the two, I think for life, I'd have to keep Windsor. Next, I gotta keep an Embroxen heavy fragrance for sure. And one of my favorites that you can easily find every size bottle, except for maybe 200 ml, under $40, because $40 is the cutoff for me for what I consider a cheap fragrance. It's gonna be the original Coach for Men. I still love this stuff, guys. It still smells just really, really good. It's just so bright and fresh, and it's got that little bit of a shower gel quality, but it kind of does its own thing at the same time. Anytime I smell Coach for Men, it's Coach for Men, or I smell Coach for Men in other fragrances, not the other way around, where I think Coach for Men smells like a bunch of different things. It's got this kumquat, this juicy pear. It's just so bright and juicy up top. It's got some ambergris, I believe a little bit of amberwood as well, and this lovely suede note that kind of gives it some character to kind of not make it just every blue fragrance out there it is a mass appealing blue fragrance type of thing um, as a lot of you know that's it's my jam I love these mass appealing fragrances but it's one I'd have to keep 60 ml like this under 30 bucks 100 ml right around 37 38 bucks maybe 35 depending on where you find them not a beast you know my fragrance collection doesn't have to be full of beast as long as I have one here and there for when I'm in the mood for that I'm good because this is like a five hour fragrance on my skin Pretty loud in the first hour and a half. Definitely can pull some compliments when people can smell you. It's versatile. I think it dresses up and dresses down well. It can kind of do it all. You know, Swiss Army knife type of stuff. And you got to have some fragrances like that in your collection. If not, just well, you got to at least have one. If I'm only keeping 10 cheapies, this is going to be one of those. I got to keep Coach for Men. So next has been, this fragrance has been acquired since I did the original video. This is one that's going to be new for this update. Um, it's become synonymous with my channel. It's one of my favorite cheap fragrances. I recommend this to you guys all the time. They pop up at the rack stores often. 
it's cheap another one not a beast in performance but it is pretty loud for the few hours that it'll be on my skin um, I'm sure it'll be the same for you it's got that Invictus Aqua meets Y meets first instinct kind of smell you know where I'm going with this as I say that it is Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct together it smells like the three it smells like the original version of this mixed with a little touch of Y and a lot of Invictus Aqua. It even matches the color scheme of the newer style Invictus Aqua bottles. I love this stuff. I have multiple bottles for a reason. Look, if you don't like synthetic, you'll hate this. It's super synthetic. Super synthetic. It can be headache inducing if synthetic fragrances do that to you. But it's got this bright, sharp grapefruit up top. This, It's like an amp, salty ambergris kind of smell. It's a bomb of it. It's very aquatic, very inviting super duper fresh and for about the first two hours it's pretty loud off of my skin and i'm not going to sit here and call it a room filler it's not a room filler but a few feet out you're going to smell me pretty easy when i walk by even if you don't say anything you're going to smell me if you're breathing through your nose at all even partially you're going to smell me i've gotten many compliments with this stuff i like wearing it out the shower i like wearing it casually i like wearing it to work i like doing everything with it in the warm weather definitely a hot weather aquatic Oh man, but even in the winter, I was wearing it out the shower just to have a reason to wear it. It just, it smells so good for me. 20 bucks will get you a 50 ml like this, 25 bucks a 100 ml. They pop up at Marshall's all the time. This is a dice roller type of fragrance. This is one of those I would say, just blind buy it and give it a try. I don't know where you can sample it. I don't even know if samples exist, um, but it's definitely one I would say is worth giving a shot. You're mo if you're buying it from a rack store, you're going to blind buy it anyway. You could do a lot worse with 20 bucks than getting a fragrance like this. And for me, it's one I'll have to keep for life. It's Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct together. Next, I don't recall this being in the last video. I didn't rewatch the original. Um, I just kind of made my list and I'm rolling with it. And this is one of my favorite springtime fragrances. Even though it's a blue bottle and blue's in the name, it's very, very green. It's green through and through. It's all about fresh herbs, spices, a little bit of citrus. It just screams springtime in green to me. It's from John Varvatos. It's Artisan Blue. This is my favorite John Varvatos fragrance. Has been for a long time. I've been through a 75 ml of it. This is my 125 ml. This, oh man. This, nothing synthetic about this. This actually smells pretty niche level for a designer. This is my thoughts and opinions. I think the quality of the oils is very well and very well done in here. It's not obviously not the highest level of oils as far as a quality standpoint, but it definitely doesn't smell like some cheap designer or even a mid-level designer. This is one of those designer fragrances that borders in the quality you would expect of I would say lower level niche, you know. It's definitely there. And blue for how fresh it is, but Definitely not aquatic, not super watery. It's fresh and airy, but it's all about the fresh greens with this one. It's a little fresh spicy, but it's more just about fresh herbs and greens. Really, really dig this one. I always have. Another one, nothing special in performance, like three or four hours, and you got to respray. I don't mind. I douse myself in this. This is a 10 plus sprayer for me, even on refresh. 10 to 12 sprays every time I wear it, spray my clothes, all of that. Um, not a strong performer, but I'll be damned if it doesn't smell good. And it's one that I would like to smell for the rest of my life. So chalk this one up to one that's got to be a lifer from a cheapy standpoint. It's John Barbados Artisan Blue. Next, this one should not surprise any of you that are familiar with my channel, especially that have been watching some of the more recent individual reviews, because I just recently did an individual review on this one. Um, this is kind of the fragrance that really sparked the love that you see here today. For fragrances it was the first fragrance i really sought after as a child of course i'm talking about tommy by tommy hilfiger another one don't perform worth a crap but i love how it smells and i don't mind refreshing juicy citrus bright very fresh spicy a little bitter but much more fresh spicy the bitterness comes from this cactus note that's in there um, they have these red berries that I don't necessarily pick up and cotton flour and stuff. Kind of adds a little bit of a powderiness in the dry down, but it doesn't change a whole lot. It's not a long-lasting fragrance. It's pretty short-lived. It's like a three-hour fragrance on my skin. I don't mind refreshing with anything, let alone this. This is a scent that I've been enjoying on and off most of my life since the fifth grade. 
and uh, yeah, I'll always have a bottle. This little one ounce is almost empty. I have another one ounce. I have a 1.7 ounce. I just, as I see them go on clearance, I see them as a steal, I'll pick them up because I know over the years I'll use them because it's one I always have gone back to and it's one I always will go back to. This is, for what it is, a bit on the unique side. There's not really much that smells like it these days. I hear that Montal Fougere's Marine uh, kind of smells like a niche version of it. I need to try that one day if that's the case. Uh, another one of those fragrances I've procrastinated because if it's a niche version of Tommy... I need to quit putting it off and I need to get it. Um, but there's just so many fragrances out there that I want to get. But irrelevant to the point, this screams the 90s to me. This screams my childhood. It's nostalgic as they come for me. And it's why I always have a bottle. A cheap fragrance for life, undoubtedly for me, is Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. We might as well get all the nostalgia picks out the way here in the, the heart of the video, I guess you could call it, the middle picks. Because uh, it's not ranked in any order, but this is another one that's pretty synonymous with my weekly rotation videos. It hasn't been showing up lately because I haven't been wearing it, but historically it's in, it's probably the most featured fragrance on this channel if you look at all the weekly rotation videos. It is Nautica Classic. It's a timeless classic for me. Not something that everybody seems to like, but hey, it's irrelevant to the individual. If you like it, you like it. And for me, I like it. I do have a vintage bottle. I do have another backup of the newer style, watered down stuff. It's like a two hour fragrance, you know. It's it's nothing in performance, but it's one that I really enjoy. It's salty marine aquatic, a little touch of florals. It smells not drastically different from the original, but you can tell there's a pretty strong difference here in how it was reformulated from the vintage bottles to the newer renamed Nautica Classic, which is what this is. Um, still, I would say 70%, 75% the same fragrance, but there's a richness and a floral tone in the vintage version that's not as strong here. This is more on the saltwater marine side of what the original was, whereas the original had more of the woods and florals going with the backbone of the marine aspect. Because Nautica, it's all about water sports and stuff like that. So it's true to the heritage of the brand and what the brand's about. And uh, it's cheap. You can find these for like 10 bucks online for a 100 ml. Like I said, it's not one that everybody really likes, and that's totally fine. But for me, it's one I always have to have a bottle of because it's very nostalgic for me. Pretty much just like Tommy. So this is going to be the last nostalgia pick. Um, I've, this is another one I've had many bottles of over the years since the late 90s was when I started wearing this. And uh, it's a timeless classic, in my opinion. It's been flankered to death. There's still flankers coming out every year, currently. Um... The newest one being an Eau de Parfum flanker, because everybody's on that EDP flanker train in the last year. I'm talking about the original Boss Bottled, Boss Number 6. This is my big 200 milliliter bottle. I do have a little one ounce that's almost empty that I've started to wear again. <sighs> that apple pie smell. So I get a lot of sharp woods, cinnamon. There's some bright apple here. It's crisp. It's edgy. Um, this is one of my, you know, I've said this before in the past and it's still so true for me this to this day that I think gray suit, I think gray suit when I smell this. I've always thought it pairs well with a gray suit specifically. I don't know why gray just always has for me. It's, it's strange. Another one doesn't perform like it used to. There's other ways. The Intenso de Parfum is a richer, sweeter version of this that performs better. The EDP has some of this one's DNA, but it's more modernized. It's like taking this and making it a blue fragrance is what the newest flanker is all about, in my opinion, of course. Um, it's a timeless classic. I'll lay claim to that right now. I said it, I mean it, I stand by it. You can get testers for like 25 bucks, full presentations for around 28 to 30 bucks online from discounters. It's cheapy gold. It's a good pillar in a collection because it's so versatile, it can do everything. It's not so rich and warm that you can't wear it in the summertime. There's better options for the summer, but this is signature scent worthy type of stuff. This is a great fragrance for if you're on a budget, you want something that's a little refined that can be taken seriously or can be playful and laid back and casual at the same time that you can wear for anything, any time of year. Boss number six is great for that. It always has been. I hope it never goes anywhere. It doesn't look like it is because it's the bread and butter. It's the base DNA for, you know, their 
whole marketing for their fragrance side is Boss Bottled, basically, because like I said, they've flankered it to death. But one that I'll always have to have in my collection, this is my last nostalgia pick for this video, and that is Boss Bottled, also known as Boss Number no. 6. Next, so its intense flanker gets all the love. Now the love has died down. The hype train has kind of killed over on the intense flanker. And, you know, it is what it is. It had its heyday. It's still a great fragrance. I'm not going to say anything against it. I personally enjoy its original DNA the most in the line, even though every flanker is good from what I've smelled. I don't have all of them, but the ones I have, they're all great fragrances. They really are. Great designer fragrances that get cheap from discounters. I'm talking about Bentley for Men. Look, I like the Intense. I really like Azure. And I have Silver Lake, which I think was a great release in addition to the line. It's basically a powerful version of Aqua de Jo. Hard not to like Aqua de Jo, but this, spicy boozy. It tones down that rough and raw leather and the heavy, dense woods and the super smokiness of the Intense. And it's more wearable. I find it's more wearable for more situations. Um, I mean, hell, if you want to wear Bentley for Men Intense when the heat index is 117 outside, you can. You're well within your rights to do what you want with your fragrance. But as far as appropriateness, I would say fall, winter, evening wear, daytime, depending on how you dress for daytime, personally. Because it is a little bit dressier. It's very, very masculine. The rum and the spices are at the forefront here. Um, the bay leaf is very present, whereas I think it's toned back a little bit more in the intense because the leather, the smokiness, and the woods all kind of come to the forefront with the rum, and the spice isn't as heavy. Whereas here, I think it's all about spices and rum. It's a bit smoother. It's not as rough, rugged, and raw as the intense. Um, so I just like it. It's a little bit more wearable. I really like it. You can find it 24, 25 bucks, anywhere under 30. I mean, you're doing great with this one. And uh, it performs very well. Not as well as the Intense, but still an eight hour fragrance with some really strong projection. This is no subtle fragrance. People will notice you when you wear this. But if you're like me and you like spices more than leather and smoke, this would be the one to get. And it's a few bucks cheaper than getting the Intense. Redundant to have both? Yes, but there's enough differences in their characteristics with the balance that you can kind of do both. If you really like one, you can have the other for different things. You can, but it is still pretty redundant in my opinion. But it's one that I got to keep, you know? I just really, really like this fragrance. I don't wear it all the time because I have just so many fragrances, but if I'm whittling it down to just 10 cheap fragrances that I'm going to keep, this one definitely makes the cut every time. That's the original Bentley for Men. Next, this has been added to my collection since the original video as well. I have since I got this, since getting this in my possession, acquired a backup bottle, a 100 milliliter bottle. It's, it's cheapy gold. It really is um, polarizing because not everybody's a fan, but those that love it, love it hard and swear by it because it is a unique cheap fragrance with the best atomizer in the game. I'm talking about Sean John 3AM. Just featured this in my weekly rotation yesterday. And I said the same thing, best atomizer in the game. It's just that good. Tonic water smell, bright citrus up top, fig leaf, this kind of smooth, strange leather. Um, it's unique. It's unique. It's not heavy fig. It's more tonic water than fig. The fig kind of supports and lays underneath. Uh, it's very invigorating. It's like a a glass of iced tonic water, you know? It's not super minty or anything, but I think of an icy glass beverage when I smell it. It's just different. Another one, nothing special in performance. It just smells really good. It's invigorating. Um, doesn't smell overly synthetic or too cheap or anything. It's just, it's a solid fragrance. It's a really good fragrance for your money, especially. That's why I say this is cheapy gold. You can do so much worse for what this fragrance will cost you. Um, there's a lot of cheap junk out there, and there's a lot of cheap gems. And this is 100%, in my opinion, a cheap gem, and one that I would love to have for the rest of my life if I got to whittle down to just 10 cheapies. And uh, having a backup bottle of that should solidify that opinion for you. That's Sean John, 3 a.m. Now, even though this was not a ranked video, I did save the best for last. 
Um, fans of the channel that have been watching me a while, you anticipated this the second you saw the thumbnail, the video title. You know this fragrance is going to be in here. This is the fragrance that's most synonymous with TLTG reviews. Um, aside from my own fragrance, you know. I just love this stuff. It's my favorite blue fragrance. It's my favorite cheap fragrance. Salvatore Ferragamo Aqua Essenziale Blue. No surprises here if you've watched me before. Because this has been featured many times. I just love it. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people that have taken my advice on this one. And the majority of the response and feedback I've gotten from it is the thank me later thing I always talk about. Spray it now, thank me later. How I close my videos out. Most of the time it's them thanking me later. And I greatly appreciate that. I love that people remember the, the punch lines and, and the sayings and the signatures I have and stuff like that. And I, I appreciate that, guys. I really do. Y'all have no idea. I love you guys. But look, it's not for everybody. There's people that have been disappointed by it. Luckily, it's not super expensive. Yes, the price has gone up in the last two years. But even in the 30 some odd dollar range, it's still very well worth it. It performs very well for me. I know for a lot of you, it performs very well also. I get easy eight hours. I get great projection for two hours. Um, I do have a backup gift set of this as well. This is one that if I, if I was to update this list every year, this will be in the list every year. I'll never, this will never change for me. I love this fragrance. I really, this fragrance has my heart. To be honest with you, if I had to whittle down to just like five fragrances, period, no matter niche, cheap, designer, whatever, this would make it every time. This is going to make every, every for life video that it can fit in, to be completely honest. Um, you can still find them popping up at rack stores. 50 mLs like this pop up for $16.99. You see it for $16.99, it is a steal at that price. Scoop it up. As long as you don't mind a little bit of a powdery lavender, because the lavender is a little powdery in the dry down here with that tonka bean. It's not a soapy lavender. It's more floral powdery, the way it mixes with the tonka bean. Um, blue fragrance at its core. A little bit more well put together blue fragrance, but still versatile enough to wear its t-shirt as you want it to be. But it does dress up a little bit better than, say, a Dylan Blue, which I would say this is an alternative for. Not the same smell. An alternative. I actually did a shorts video recently about that, and people were saying, I don't think they smell anything alike. Well, genius, I didn't say they smelled exactly alike. It's an alternative, not a clone. <laughs> if you want to save a couple more dollars, this can do the same job for you. It's a little bit more dense, it's a little bit more powdery, but it has a lot of similarities for the vibe of Dylan Blue. And definitely one I'm going to have to keep for life. Salvatore Ferragamo, Aqua Essenziale Blue. Well, that is my 10. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. If you had to only keep 10 fragrances, 10 cheap fragrances in your collection, what 10 would that be? What would that look like? Sound off in the comments. I'm curious. Even if it was, you know, if you have a smaller collection and you only have 10 total fragrances, let's say three or four of them are cheapies. If you only had to keep two of them, what would be the, or the main one? No matter what, i got to have this cheapie in my collection. Let's talk about that in the comment section. I challenge you to... To, to throw it out there. What's the cheapies that are just got to keep them for you? And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the cheapies that I plan on keeping for life, and give them a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>